Hi everyone, welcome back to the workshop. It's been two or three weeks since I last uploaded a video. So I thought I'd make a short video here just to update you all on uh, what I've been doing in the workshop of late and what I've got planned. So I've actually got two projects on the go at the moment. So the first project is one that I'd made mention of in one of my previous videos and it's the handheld voltage source. Um, but like I said, I've got a, an analog one that I use in the workshop all the time and I thought uh, it'd be nice to make uh, an Arduino powered one with a, a pretty accurate uh, DTA converter inside it and all the rest of it. So I'll take you down on the workbench and show you how I'm getting on with that. So as I said, this is the analog one that I'm currently using. Again, it's a homemade one that I made quite uh, a couple of years ago, quite a few years ago really. And I'll just switch it on and let you have a look. Power switch at the top, and basically it's 0 to 10 volt. You can dial up any voltage you want in between 0 and 10 there. And you've got a min switch for 0 volts and a max switch for 10 volts there. And uh, it's really handy. It's got built in uh, silicon leads with the uh, crop clips in the end. Really handy device to have in the workshop. So, like I said, I want to make a, a digital version of it. So I'm actually going to use the same case, because I happen to have another one lying around, uh, just so I can keep them the same. And, uh, like I said, this one's going to be Arduino powered, so the plan was to put a, a keypad. This is the same type of keypad that I used on the home-built uh, uh, bench power supply, so that's going to go on there. And I'm going to put a nice big LCD on there, and possibly a, a rotary pot uh, on the front there so you can either type in the voltage that you're wanting or put it in a manual mode so much the same as you've got on the analog one there. Um, internal um, 3.7 volt uh, LiPo battery inside, put a charge socket in the side and all that sort of thing. I'm not going to put an on off switch, it's going to be soft, uh, a soft power switch on it for bringing it up um, from standby effectively. So that's the plan. Um, so over here if I just take you across to the breadboard. I'm actually testing out uh, a few different LCDs. Um, I did actually try using a, a small one there in a smaller case, but uh, it's a little bit small and the case that I've found for that one is not really suitable. Um, so I've found this nice big LCD here and it's just the right width as you can see for the case. If I can just get down a bit there and you can sort of see the the scale there, uh, so you've got sort of got your keypad there, and that's what you're looking at really. And the width of the LCD is just nice; it just fits in between these beveled edges on the the sides of the case there. So that's really good. The code that I've got running at the moment, um, basically here's the Arduino Nano there. The code that I've got running at the moment is just some test code. You might recognise this from a home. Uh, made power supply. I'm going to be using the same base code and basically I've just adapted the the LCD driver routines to make it suitable for this uh, particular LCD. It uses a slightly different interface therefore it needs uh, the driver needed tweaked a bit in order to work but as you can see I've got that up and running it is actually scanning and right into the display so that's uh, up and running. So I've kind of proved the background to the, the, the display technology uh, at the moment so I can get on with that and really that's got me fixed on the case and the, and the keypad etc. Um, I'm in the moment. I'm in the middle at the, uh, right now of choosing a suitable D to A converter, but I'm going to be way up at 18 or 20 bit. That's the plan. I'm looking at a zero to 10 volt output as I did with the analog one, but I'm looking for uh, you know, microvolt uh, resolution on the output there. So I need a pretty accurate. Uh, uh, high resolution D to A. And that's going to challenge me when it comes to the PCB because I'm actually going to lay out a PCB, a proper PCB for the inside of here. LCD will be mounted on it. It'll have all the battery connections and the keypad connections, all the rest of it. It's all going to be one single uh, circuit board inside there. So that takes me nicely on to the uh, layout uh, software that I'm going to be using for the PCB and believe it or not I'm not going to be using Eagle PCB. Um, I decided it was time to you know, move away from Eagle and possibly try something else so I've actually looked at the Altium products uh, Altium designer is far too expensive. I've looked at Circuit Maker, Circuit Maker but nah, not really happy enough with that either. So almost at the point of going back to Eagle, I, you know, I looked at KiCad and uh, uh, all, the other, all the various other ones on the go, and I'm not really happy until I stumbled upon this application. And this is Auto 
Trax Design Express, or DEX as it is for short. Um, I was pointed towards this application by one of the users over on the EEV blog forums. And to tell you the truth, I'm quite blown away with the functionality uh, of this software. It's $49 to buy, and that's all in. There doesn't seem to be any scale, pricing scale in or anything like that. It's just buy it for $49 and you get the lot. And what you get for that, obviously, is the full schematic capture. And there's the uh, sample schematic that comes with it. And what I like about this application, believe it or not, and it's a, it's a tiny little issue, but for most people, but actually it's a big issue for me, and that's the mouse controls, how it operates with the mouse. Um, this one here is exactly the same as Eagle, and exactly the same as AutoCAD, which I use on a daily basis. And that is, you use the mouse wheel to zoom in and out, but you also use the mouse wheel when you press down on it to pan around. Then I started looking at all the features it's got, and uh, you know, here's the, the sample schematic that comes with it. I like the layout, I like the yellow uh, blocks, uh, boxes for the ICs, and here's the sample PCB, and 3D built in. The other thing that's att attracting me towards this, it can import Eagle PCBs and Eagle PCB libraries, so that's a real, real bonus. And here's the second project that I've got going in the workshop. It's not quite electronics, but believe me, uh, there is a little bit involved, but uh, I'm refurbing an old lathe that I managed to acquire uh, through a friend of the family. As you can see, it's just a little hobby 818 lathe there, and it's in dire need of a clean-up. If I zoom in a little bit, you can see it's quite a bit of corrosion, and it's been sitting in an, a, in an outside shed, uh, basically to the elements for many a year, so it's not seized up or anything like that. It does actually, uh, you know, the, sp the spindles all rotate, the chuck rotates and all the rest of it. It just needs a damn good clean up and a plate paint. So the plan is that's going to be uh, the, uh, another project that I'll be working on, uh, you know, pretty soon. This end here where the base, the, the, it's belt driven from a, a motor that's meant to blow uh, the lathe itself and a, a belt coming up to drive this here and a few bits of gears there. There's a cover missing here but I'm not too worried about that because I want to actually make some modifications around this area. Um, I'm actually going to get a proper stand for the lathe, the type with the two columns with the little drawers in each one of the columns and the idea is that uh, I've got a motor here that I'm going to mount below the pulley, the main pulley here on in, inside the one of the pillars there and the belt will come up here um, up onto the, the the pulleys here and then I'm obviously going to encase this in a nice alloy or steel uh, enclosure for all that there. I don't plan on uh, being able to change the gearing on the, the belt here because what I'm going to do, and this is where the electronics come in, uh, this is a, a single phase AC motor so I'm going to get a, a uh, a variable drive for it and I'm going to be able to vary the speed of the motor rather than run it at full speed all the time. So there'll be a control upon the lathe here for adjusting the speed and uh, it won't be from zero, these motors don't like uh, um, zero RPM or anything quite low but I don't need anything uh, that slow, not on a lathe anyway, so it'll be able to vary it from probably about 25% all the way up to 100% full speed. So that's the plan there. Um, um, so I'll be working on that one. It's not there's not going to be much of a video on it. I'll probably just do another video once I get the motor installed and I start working on the the variable speed drive for it. Uh, but this is just something a little bit of a toy for me to put through in the other part of the workshop through that door there.